What is up, booby goaters? Today, I want to talk about something that I rarely ever talk about, which is gestational diabetes. Yeah. You know? Well, if you don't know, my name's Erin. Welcome to Booby Goats. And usually on my channel, I just do, like, some carnivore stuff, or I'm just out there, like, doing gardening, homesteading, shot off the chickens because I think they're awesome creatures that give you yummy food to eat that are very good for you and very nutritious eggs. But today, I thought, let's do a little story. Why not? Because story time is a fun time! You know, usually, when you find out you're pregnant, you make an appointment with your OBGYN or your family doctor or whatever your healthcare provider you go see. And uh, they do a run of tests, just blood tests and things, to see if there's, like, maybe gestational diabetes, all the things, right? They, they run your blood, man. So, I have 10 kids, if you don't know. And my first baby, no gestational diabetes. Healthy weight, 7-pounder. Beautiful little baby girl. Second baby. No gestational diabetes. Did get the epidural. The epidural fell out. Nine pound, 11 ounce baby. So with my third, when I was about six months in, they did an ultrasound and he was big. He was, he was measuring big. And I was also getting big. I usually gain like 30 to 50 pounds with these babies. I am not a beautiful pregnant lady ever. But when I went in for that test, I had to do another gluco test. And, you know, you had to drink this, like, disgusting pink drink. And I could do it pretty fast, which is awesome. And then you wait an hour. They take your blood at the beginning, and they think you wait an hour, and they take your blood again. And I was diagnosed with gestational diabetes. Now, I wasn't really sure what this stuff was. So, you know, I had to go home and I didn't have a phone at the time because this is like 2009 and I didn't believe in devices or having them because I lived a better life without them. So I went home, typed it into my computer. They had to do a three hour test on me. And then I failed miserably on this three hour test where you can't eat before they take your blood and you have to drink this nasty sugary drink and try not to puke. Because if you puke, you got to do it again. Um, failed that test miserably. And then they realized that my second daughter's weight was like 9 pounds, 11 ounces. They were like, whoa, let's look up your blood work back then and see what it looks like. And she and the lady was like, you were on the cusp. So they didn't say anything. And I'm like, oh, okay. Never heard that before. And so they give you this pamphlet. And they teach you how to, like, you got to poke your finger two hours after you eat meals. And you got to do it, like, for your fasting glucose, your bedtime glucose, all that stuff. So you poke your finger a lot. Because this is basically diabetes. They just don't want your baby to get super big and it have problems during birth or your baby dies, you know, during birth. You know, because it's so big. And so that kind of freaked me out. And I'm reading this stuff and I got to eat whole grain bread. I have to follow their, I followed this pamphlet that they gave me and I would eat what it told me to eat and I would check my blood sugars and they'd still be very high. And so they put me on a drug. Uh, I don't know if metformin was it or there was another one that they gave me. It wasn't a, it was a low dose, but it worked and it dropped my blood sugar I had to do a stress test and uh, just to make sure the baby's moving around fine and everything's still real good. And, you know, I did all that. And it's a lot. It's a lot when you are diagnosed with gestational diabetes and you have two little ones at home and, and you got to, like, figure out how to eat right, even though you have these pamphlets and there's the Internet and you can type it in. And I don't know. I had a nice, healthy baby boy. So my next password, next pregnancy, gestational diabetes. Got that right away. Um, I, I would only lose like maybe 30 pounds after I gained 50 on each kid. 
So I didn't lose all my weight back. Like what what I am right now, um, 170, 169, that was impossible for me to get to. I was just at like 230 forever. You should know that with my first diagnosis of gestational diabetes, I just dropped like sugary drinks and candy and all that. On my second diagnosis, I decided to drink diet sodas, which I know is kind of really bad. And it is bad. So don't do it. My second diagnosis with gestational diabetes, I realized that if you just exercise after you ate, because you have a two hour window to get your sugars down, it worked. And I could like prick my finger, take my blood, and it would be like at least 111. The highest I had was 127. And I always try to keep it in that. But still, they thought it was kind of high, and they put me on, it wasn't metformin, I can't remember what the drug was called, but start with a P, but it was a very, very low dose. It was like a 0.5 of it. And I had that through that pregnancy. He was born early, but he was my small little baby. He was only six pounds. My pregnancy after that, I had an idea. And this is bad. Like, I am not a doctor. But if you don't want to have gestational diabetes and prick your finger for the whole nine months, listen here. So what I did was when they gave me the drink and I had to wait an hour, during that hour, I did squats. And it didn't have to be weird. It would just be like, try to sit down in your chair kind of low, but you're not sitting in your chair. And you just sit there and use your muscles to hold you up. And then you sit back down and you're tired and do it again and again and again. They took my blood. And I didn't have gestational diabetes on that one, but I knew I had it because I cheated. And because I did that, um, I just made sure I ate really healthy with her. It was a great pregnancy. She came out eight pounds, which is kind of a normal number for me. So that's what we, like, I went with that. It worked. I was pregnant with number six. Um, I didn't do enough exercise with that one. And they caught, I mean, they caught it in my blood. So... I gestational diabetes through that one, but I didn't take any drugs. And the reason why I didn't take any drugs is I stopped eating carbohydrates and all, well, I guess you could say that I had a few because I would eat the vegetables and the vegetables on my plate were big and the meat portion was small. So I'd always be kind of hungry, but I'd also like drink a bunch of water and then exercise after. And that was like my main thing. And I still gained some weight, but I didn't, I didn't gain like a ton like I usually do. Well, maybe I did. Yeah. I did gain weight still. I was still like, you know, 40 pounds big. And they hate it when you have gestational diabetes because right after your baby's born, they got to test your baby sugar to make sure that your baby doesn't have anything like hypoglycemia or something weird. I think that's what it is. I am no nurse either, and I did not look it up. I'm just saying, like, these are the things that they did, and it was boring and horrible. So, when I was pregnant with my seventh, before I became pregnant with him, I started the post office, and I was walking, like, 20 miles a day, probably. I dropped 40 pounds, and I was walking during that pregnancy until up to, like, maybe five months pregnant, and they turned me, they made me a driver. And that's where I gained the weight. But because I was walking, when they tested me for gestational diabetes, I didn't have it because I was moving so much before. So that's something you want to look into if you're going to become pregnant, kind of overweight. Walking a lot will do it. We'll we'll help you from that. Let's see. Yeah. And I was fine. That was a good birth. They had... I had to be induced with that one because he was running kind of late. So I guess after my second pregnancy, all my children were induced after that. And I always just wanted not to be induced, but I was. So with my eighth child, I had it. And I just decided, you know, the small portion of meat, all the veggies, and that's it. Like, I would eat the top part off the pizza, the cheese, the meat, you know, but not the pizza crust. Or when I ate a burger, I would just eat the burger and the pickles if we were going out to eat, you know? And I I was 
basically on to something, but I didn't quite get it. So I really didn't know about keto or like I've heard about it, but I never like went into reading more about it. And it's kind of funny because it's like, I was actually getting to that. Like I stopped all the sugars. I didn't eat any carbohydrates, like bread products. Cause I've, I've learned that when I eat that stuff, even the wheat, my blood sugar spiked. So I stopped doing that. Um, Nixon was a nine pound baby and he is a big guy. He's got big feet. His feet wouldn't fit. You know, when they stamp the little feet on the paper, his feet were too big to fit on the little square in the paper. Sweet little boy. So with Emmett and Raquel, I had it as well, but with, but I never had to take any metformin with them after I gave birth to the baby. And I would just go back to the normal standard American diet. And so I would lose 30 pounds from birth, but I would gain it all back. And I was kind of at a loss. So when Raquel was, when she was about three to four months old, I started watching a lot of stuff about the carnivore diet. And then I saw Dr. Barry and he was all like, just try it and then do your testimony on the internet. People need to hear about it. it, it it's helpful. So she was five months old. And I tried it, but I did under eat in the beginning. And how I know is that when I tried to exercise, because I would exercise every day. Now I'm getting very lazy, but I'm I'm going to go back to exercising. <laughs> I've just been outside working and gardening. So I figure that's like the same thing. Maybe it's not. And maybe I, I would probably benefit from extra exercise. But back to my story. Rewind. Um... So with Raquel, I noticed a drop in my uh, breastfeeding because I, I breastfeed her. I still breastfeed her. She's like almost two. Like I go all the way to two, two and a half. Whenever they quit, usually they're just like, nah, I'm good. So that's what I go with with my kids. Um, yeah, but I noticed like a drop in the breast milk. And so I was like, well, I'm not stressed or anything. I don't know what's going on. And I just, you know... Realize I'm not eating enough meat. Because it's a diet, I figured I'd treat it like a diet. That's not what you do. Especially if you're breastfeeding and your kid's like five months old, eat more meat. And what I noticed with her in like the first few days of switching totally to carnivore, her baby diaper poos, you, you could smell them. Like they were stanky. And I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> what? I've... Never experienced that because, you know, breastfeeding diapers are different from formula diapers. They always are. You know, in the beginning, it's CD and it's mustard. And, yeah, yeah, you know, you just got diagnosed with gestational diabetes. I got the answer. It's so simple. You get up in the morning, eat some bacon, eggs, and butter. From lunch, have a little patty. Many as you want. And if you want dinner, do the same, you know? Eat a steak. But um, if you want to do it my way and you want to add veggies, just because you're you don't really trust it and you're concerned, eat veggies, but do do like way more meat than the veggies. And I think that would even work with people with diabetes, but you know, I'm no doctor, it's just my experience and what happened with me and Hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully it's not. You're just listening to some nut that wears a t-shirt says, keep coming, eat the meat. Yep. <laughs> but hey, this is working. I'm kind of like in a stall right now too. I feel it. I feel it my body. It's kind of like stalled. So I was thinking maybe I'd go back to the poor man's uh, lion's diet. I might do it. I think I would have amazing results if I did it. But I'd also have to take a supplement like an electrolyte supplement every day. I know I, I need that, so I have to go buy a bunch, and I don't really want to buy them, or, you know, I can make them. But I'm kind of like in this lazy mode. The summer heat's got to me, and I like swimming. I don't know. Well, movie gunners, I hope you have a great day. I hope this was kind of helpful. If anything else, don't eat the carbs while you are diagnosed gestational 
diabetes. It will help your birth weights. They might be a little big, but like an eight pound baby is normal for me. And it was normal for my mother. So that's okay, I guess. I don't know. I can birth them. I know that. But um, I just wanted to be helpful about it. Possibly save you from pricking your finger like like six times a day. I don't know. Wasn't it like once in the morning, two hours after breakfast, prick your finger again, two hours after lunch, and again, two hours after dinner. Um, and also just walking and exercising right after you eat will help. And if you have that uncontrollable hunger for sugar, don't do it. Eat something else. Eat some butter. Because honestly, if you eat something like fatty and opposite, it's very helpful. I can be helpful. You can drop a comment. Um, I'll keep trying my best. I'm not a doctor. I am not a nurse. What I'm saying is I am a mother and a person that has 10 children. And... I had them. Any question at all with that, I can help you. Uh, just, yeah, if you feel like you're breastfeeding and or you feel that your um, volume has gone down, just eat more. Meat and butter, like the fatty stuff. It'll be helpful and it, it will help you. Oh, and also when I started, like, you know, when you start to feed your baby, like the baby rice or the baby stuff that they tell you to feed them, my kids never like that stuff. So I opted to not feed them baby food at all, nurse even more. And when they started like taking stuff off my plate and eating that way, that's when I, they would start eating food for themselves. Oh, also, um, mint tea. For some, if you you want a sweet kick, it, it kind of helps me. And you know, you gotta watch out with teas in pregnancy though. With Flash, I drank a lot of green tea, even though they tell you not to. And he had like shivers after he was born. And the nurse was like, "Do you drink a lot of coffee?" And I was like, "No, but I drink a bunch of green tea." Oh my gosh. I don't know what else the carnivore talk about? But I carnivore this, and I think that. Look at my. Do these look like hands that have too much salt? I thought you just feed out the salt that you, your body couldn't consume, right? I don't think they're that bad. Ah, I'm short, stubby, and I still have 30 pounds to go, so. <laughs> Ugh. Carnivore. Talk about a diet that you're not hungry because you ate a lot of protein. Like, duh. Any nutrition person going, you gotta eat protein, you have to have protein, 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 protein. Guess what, guys? Protein is great for you. Duh. And I wish I knew about the carnivore diet way back when, but I didn't. It would have been truly helpful, but I have it now, and it is so much helpful, and I'm so thankful to have it. You know, they say, do the 30-day carnivore diet challenge. What is it? The BBB needs? Do a nice 60 day. You don't have, after a while though, I don't know, I don't like bacon as much as I used to. <laughs> but <laughs> you eat when you're hungry. You figure out when you're hungry, you'll know your cues and you'll be good. Um, if I were ever to fall pregnant again, carnivore through the whole pregnancy, I would totally. Um, but I'm good with my 10 and I don't need any more. So we're good there. You have a great day, boom gooders. Keep calm. Eat some meat. Drink some tea. Is he waters? It's all good. It's all good. It's a little hot in my house. I don't believe in air conditioning. I have fans for that.